Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do this sketch of a margarita. And this was from the Food Paint Challenge over on Instagram, which is one of the places I love to go when I'm feeling uh, a little uninspired and I just wanna draw something. And if you find yourself uninspired, not knowing what to draw, you just wanna draw something, I wanna let you know my new class, 30 Days to Better Painting, features 30 lessons in 30 minutes or less. In, and you can use gouache, acrylics, or oils for that. And I'll put a link in the video description. It's 50% off for the month of June 2023. So it's a great time to grab it. And of course you get lifetime access so you can buy the class now and do it whenever you have the chance. It's designed to do it daily, but you can do it every other day or however it makes you happy, however it fits your schedule. It's basically to get you in the practice of daily painting or frequent painting so that you will draw faster, more accurately, and you will just get to the business of making art right off the bat and hopefully avoid procrastination, which is something every artist I know has a problem with. So what I'm doing here is I am just, I screenshotted the reference photo and I am sketching it with a pencil in this tiny little sketchbook. And this sketchbook is a cotton paper sketchbook from Paul Rubens. It's very affordable. I like the quality. The paper is a uh, fairly smooth. I would call it hot press. I'm not sure how they classify it, but I would call it a hot press paper. And I will link that if you're interested in it. It does come in different sizes, but this little three inch by, I would say it's almost five inches, right, give or take, sketchbook is wonderful for these just 10 or 15 minute sketches. And the reason I'm starting off with a pencil is because um, I have a symmetrical object here, kind of a man-made versus like a, or an organic object, like a flower or a landscape. This is more precise. So I just want to kind of give myself the best chance of having it accurately drawn. I'm leaving this entire video in real time. I didn't narrate it live. I was actually watching some TV. I had, the, I had a show on in the background while I was sketching. Sometimes I find it easier just to kind of um, get comfy and get in the sketch when I've got something almost somewhat dis distracting is the wrong word. I find that I need a lot of stimulation around when I am trying to just relax and having something on in the background like a podcast or an audiobook or a TV show just kind of helps me chill out. I'm using watercolors from Rosa and what I have is the modern set. I bought the set of 12 just regular basic colors and I like them so much that I picked up the modern set which did have a few duplications it was a modern set of 21. And so I took, I didn't unwrap the duplications and I put my old paints in there. So I have, um, I think like 27 unique colors here. But anyway, both of those sets are great value. I highly recommend them. They have some good colors and they're really a steal. Rosa watercolors are a steal. I've seen they have come out with a mono pigmented set of 12 for like $30. It's in a, um, it's in a metal tin. And that would be a really good one to start off with if you want to get single pigment colors that will mix really cleanly. But uh, I'll link that up down below. The modern set that I have, the 12 set that I started with, and also that mono pigmented set in case you're interested in any of those. They're an awesome price on Amazon. And if you're looking for artist quality paints that are very affordable, kind of student grade pricing, Rosa Gallery is an excellent choice. And I started off with the lime. I painted the center kind of with this like um, green gold color. And then I went around with more of like a uh, sap green and let it kind of bleed in. I just love that loose effect. And what I'm going for is actually just kind of a colorful, loose pastel like effect here. And um, I just want to have fun with it. Now I got a little dab on the background. I'm really not gonna let that bother me. I did blot it with a paper towel. So, you know, when you're doing these sketches, these daily sketches, try not to get too fussy. Try not to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Just get in there and draw something. And that's why I love the like food paint challenge. And there's other ones out there because there's a reference photo. And usually the reference photo is not something that is like precious. It's, it's, it's fit for purpose. It's a, it might be like one of my favorite ones I did was a bag of fruit, a bag of oranges, like a plastic bag of oranges from the food paint challenge. I think that might've been the first one I did too. Um, but generally they're kind of like an ordinary photo that you just might take a snapshot of like your drink at a restaurant or, um, you know, something on your counter. It's just some random food and it's generally just kind of bland. It's not stylized. It's not, 
you know, perfectly lit. It's just a, it's just kind of like an ordinary picture. And you can go ahead and take that ordinary picture and put your own flair in it, put your own colors. You can amp up the color. You can do whatever you want. And this margarita was just like your you no know, classic house margarita, lime and tequila. Uh, but I wanted it to have a little bit more pizzazz. So I added some more colors to it and just let them kind of bleed together and have fun with it. And um, I love painting glass. So the stem of this, of this uh, margarita glass, I am getting in some reflections of like the green. I'm gonna get some of the pinks and blues and just have a good time with it, right? You want to, um, I think it's fun when you can find a reference photo and then you can put your own spin on it. You can put your own uh, flavor to it. And the thing that I personally really love about the painting challenges and like World Watercolor Month is coming up. I'm an ambassador for World Watercolor Month. The prompt list is actually already up on the World Watercolor Month blog. Uh, the thing I love about these challenges is that other people are doing them too. So you get that bit of camaraderie, kind of you're not in it on your own. You get that kind of body doubling where somebody else is doing it too. So it makes you feel a little bit more accountable to get it done. And then you get to see what other people have done and you get to see how they were inspired by that reference photo or that word prompt or whatever it is. And I just feel like it makes it kind of like a fun game. And when you can make art into a fun game and you can get that community experience with it, um, just kind of like my class, there's so many people that are currently um, enrolled. We have hundreds of people enrolled and they're all doing those challenges and you get to see what they're posting. And uh, even if you decide you don't want to post your work, you can still look and be kind of cheered on knowing that other people are going through it too. And there's something amazing about being part of a challenge where there are other people doing it at the same time you are. It's just, um, it's inspiring and it kind of, um, kind of eggs you on to do it too. It's kind of like, you know, when you're a, when you're a kid and, uh, oh, did your friends put you up to that? You know, you get some wild, crazy fun and, uh, maybe not the best decision, but you know, you were egged on by your friends. Well, this is kind of like that. This is like this peer pressure, but in a positive way, right? We're, we're encouraging each other, not pressuring each other, but encouraging each other to do these things that are really, um, are really, Really good for us and and things that you know we're happy to have done afterwards and there's nothing worse than wasting time you know don't you ever do you ever feel that like you've been sitting around uh, maybe scrolling on your phone you really would rather be drawing or painting but for whatever reason you just can't get going or maybe you even get down to your art table and you start pulling out your supplies but just nothing is happening you just can't seem to get started well, that's why I made that class. And that's why I think these uh, taking part of these art challenges you find online are really important because it, it gets you started. It gives you a little bit of accountability buddy, even though that nobody else in the world even knows you're doing this other than you until you post it, you still kind of feel a little bit of that, um, that obligation or accountability to someone else. And uh, that is, I think that's really powerful. I think that's really powerful in avoiding procrastination. I just listened to a podcast this morning from Mel Robbins, and it was about procrastination. And she had some really interesting um, takes on it, some really good insights, and I want to share a little bit about what I what I learned in that podcast today. One thing she said is that when you procrastinate, it's um, your body's response to stress. So if you are thinking, I really want to paint, I want to sit down, I want to draw, I want to paint, um, but you're you're instead you are maybe daydreaming and staring out the window or you're scrolling on social media and before you know it, two hours have gone by. That's your body saying, I am stressed out, I need a break. And um so the first thing you should do is just forgive yourself. It's like, whoa, I must have been really stressed there. I just spent all that time procrastinating. Um, so I must have been really really stressed out. So the first thing you want to do is forgive yourself. Be like, okay, I was stressed out. I did that. I'm not happy I spent my time that way, but I forgive myself from that. Then she says, you should think about what your future self would want you to do. So you of two weeks from now, what would you of two weeks from now want you to do with that time today? Would you want to keep scrolling on social media or would you want to have done that drawing and then let that be kind of like a, a springboard to the next drawing you're going to do in the next drawing well future you obviously would want you to at that moment forgive yourself and pick up your pen and your watercolors or your sketchbook and just draw something whatever it is maybe just the lamp that's sitting on your table or whatever it is whatever is easiest for you to get going with that's what your future self would want you to do so think of it in those terms first forgive yourself count to five and start. Think about what your future self would want you to do in this moment and do that. Maybe you're procrastinating something else. Like she talks about um, 
which is something I procrastinate. I hate making doctor's appointments. That's why I make next year's doctor's appointment when I'm at the doctor's office. So I make my six month dental cleaning appointment when I'm at the dentist because I know I hate to pick up the phone and make that call. So I just eliminate that, deci- that decision for me to do it. Maybe for you, it's um, you're just gonna put your sketchbook next to your coffee cup. And when you pour your coffee in the morning, you're going to grab that sketchbook and you're just going to sip your coffee while you sketch. Maybe your procrastination is watching YouTube videos in the morning. That's my procrastination when I drink my coffee. Well, if I set my sketchbook next to my coffee cup, then I can just grab that and I can sketch while I'm sipping my coffee and, you know, watching YouTube videos. So whatever it is, think about how you would want, how you would want your past self to have lived. And, uh, and go that way. And I find once I get started, once I get past that first couple minutes, that the sketch only took two minutes, right? Once I get past that first couple minutes, then I'm in the zone and I'm in the groove and I just want to draw and I want to sketch. So think about how you can get into that situation where you just want to draw and sketch too. Because once you get started, those first couple minutes are the hardest and then you will find that you are in the zone. Sorry about the dog there. She was barking because someone was dropping off a package and honestly, I was in the zone and I wanted to keep on recording. So hopefully I can get back in the zone as we do this voiceover and uh, talk about the wrapping up of this sketch. And at this point, I didn't want to stop my drawing. I was having so much fun, but I also was feeling like I was going to overwork it if I kept painting because really there wasn't that much real estate and I didn't really need to add much more color. So what I decided to do so I could keep on playing with this illustration is I grabbed a 0.1 fine liner pen. This one is by Sketch Bar or Sketch Marker. And really, it doesn't matter what brand you use. There's a lot of very similar ones out there. Micron is a really safe bet. Um, and it's also alcohol, ink, and watercolor safe. There's also, um, let's see, Ohuhu has a good set that's not too expensive. Bianyo has a nice set that's not too expensive. There's many on Amazon, but I have used Bianyo, Ohuhu, Sketch Marker, slash Sketch Bar, and Micron, and those have all been really good. Also, the pit artist pens are good. So whatever you is easy for you to find, um, it's great to have these ha- these pens on hand, especially if you like to work with alcohol inks as well as watercolor, because you could sketch with the marker first, this uh, this pen, and then you can go over it with watercolor or inks, and it doesn't smear. Sometimes you get uh, pens that are good for alcohol ink, but they will smear with watercolor and vice versa. But this is one of those unicorns that works with both. And I decided that the glass seemed to be floating a little bit and I'm doing some cross hatching in the shadow that I put with the watercolor there just to give it a little bit more weight at the bottom of the sketch and to um, make it look a little bit more uh, a little bit more finished and also flatten out the bottom of the the, the glassware that seemed a little bit wonky to me. Uh, it's not perfectly symmetrical and that's okay. I wasn't looking for perfection here. I was just looking to get started and this really did. It helped me get started and I was really happy with the way that it came out. So, you know, have fun with your work and, um, an experiment. Now I did decide that I wanted a little bit more color, but since this pen is waterproof, I can go right in and I decided to add a little bit more here and there just to amp up the color a little bit because I thought it looked a little washed out once I put the dark lines. Sometimes you put those dark lines, the bl- fine liner black is going to be your darkest value. You may realize that you can actually adjust your mid range a bit. You may even decide that you want to go in with a white pen and add some highlights. I didn't need to here. I did leave a lots of white space, but that is definitely an option. I love to have a white gel pen and a black fine liner in my kit just because sometimes if your work lacks a little punch or pizzazz, you can go in and add that linear quality and um, bring it back from the doldrums, you know, it gets kind of like muddy and yuck. Having that super, super dark value and that super, super light value can bring things back and make things a lot perkier and look a lot better. And um, here I'm just kind of adding in little patchworks of color to Uh, give it a little bit of sparkle and just kind of uh, make it a little bit brighter and nicer. But of course, that's up to you. You don't have to use hardly any color. You don't have to use any color at all. You could just keep it um, black and white if you wanted to. That's up to you. In your sketchbook, nobody has to see it. I think that's another thing. We get this pressure that we need to post everything we do online and everyone has to see it. And that can really stifle your creativity. So if you feel that way, then don't feel the pressure to post anything. Just do it for your own joy and um, and have fun with it. And here you can see the finished artwork. I'm really happy with how it came out. Remember, I have a link to 30 Days to Better Painting along with a coupon code in the video description. I'd love to see you in that class. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy crafting.